Moving right along, today a bit of a shorter video, just some walls and interesting features in Ireland and England. So last video we discussed the Berkeley Mystery Walls in the San Francisco Bay Area, California, with the rocky outcrops, the variations in the stone, and then the big long walls inexplicably, and then Ireland has a very similar feature which I'm going to assume you would guess I will say is basically by the same hand, uh, same general idea, even the, the rocky bedrock, perhaps uh, just an extension of the same type of uh, reformatting of the surface, uh, similar to this in California. Uh, so let's look at some uh, images here. Most of these images you've seen before, so I'll try and go through them a little quicker. Uh, possibly a few new ones, new images here, um, especially the examples in England at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Okay, so just a few more looks at the landscape and the walls. So this wall, I would say, has a much cleaner look to it than the one before. So there's several different uh, aesthetics uh, which hint at, um, or uh, construction styles which hint at different eras potentially, uh, different ages of the wall, and it's certainly possible. Um, it's also just possible that uh, it's different um, uh, styles by the same uh, author, uh, possibly even at the same time. Uh, it's just speculative, but yeah. Okay, so here we have a look at this portion of the wall. Kind of messy, kind of meandering. Uh, this one much straighter and much more tidy. This one kind of, uh, if you look at the surrounding rock, it resembles, I would say the surrounding rock looks about 3% uh, artificial, whereas this wall would look, you know, 98% artificial. Uh, so just uh, subjectively, okay. And then once again, these are the these are the uh, Aran Islands, A R A N, in Ireland, and they look like this from above with the long walls, which uh, allegedly are from uh, farming and agriculture, and uh, yeah, just uh, planting crops. They would uh, to clear an area, they would just gather all the rocks and then place them to the outside of whatever area they're attempting to. Uh, cultivate, but I would say that doesn't really make sense. There's too many walls. It's just too extensive and too uh, comprehensive to account for that or for that to account for all of the walls. So I think it's just gibberish as a means of hijacking our sense of context. So we have this big spectacle of a history which we can't make sense of and then that makes us unable to uh, maneuver properly through reality. Okay, anyways, so even these uh, ridges and contours in the, the bedrock, I would say are potentially artificial, but uh, I'm not gonna dwell on that too much. Just a couple different looks. The scale and aesthetic of it, here's how it looks from Google Earth. We've got plenty of like ring forts and stuff like that, which I would argue are not actual forts. They're just yet more gibberish of a different uh, order and then obvious modern stuff as well but most of this land is not in use and doesn't look like it's really been used it's just rocks and walls uh, so yeah like these patches here it's just a stone surface and bounded by haphazard uh, rock um, rock walls so uh, yeah and also the rock walls conventional explanation would be that they're to uh, uh, prevent uh, or uh, to prevent wind flow or uh, just create some type of uh, controlled little environment for whatever crops are being cultivated. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, it makes sense to a degree, certainly. Um, I'm no farmer or agriculture expert, but Yeah, I'm going to try and be not, not be too long-winded on this video. So here's another look at some of the aesthetics of it. Like these, uh, these uh, intermittently vertical, um, vertically placed stones, like here, 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 
here, here. That could be structural and strategic, but it's reminiscent of some stuff we see at Tiwanaku in Bolivia. And I should, guess I should have uh, pulled up an image, but um, just the, the periodic vertical uh, elements of the wall in kind of a somewhat haphazard fashion is uh, one of the styles that's utilized in these derpy nonsense walls. Here we have just a giant big stone and kind of a big, uh, I don't know, rock uh, wall. <laughs> Occasionally my, my brain doesn't churn out the right word, but uh, just a big rock nothing burger or, um, yeah, there we go, whatever. Uh, okay, so looking at the bedrock down here, uh, we see these grooves, natural, artificial, somewhere in between, I mean, uh, a little of both, you know, it was natural first, and then someone came around and made goofy patterns, uh, who knows, I would say these grooves are a little suspicious, hopefully you agree, they also look kind of natural, hopefully you agree on that as well, I would say, for the most part, the entire landscape is uh, crafted, so I don't know that this look to the stone is the original natural look to it. That's my best guess. It wouldn't surprise me if I'm wrong, but that's my best guess. Okay, a little lower resolution here, but here we see these long grooves like this, and kind of uh, the way they uh, angle this way and then also angle this way, like crossing, it doesn't seem like a the most natural uh, flow of, uh, I don't know, rock uh, bedding or layering or cracks or whatever you call it, uh, crevices, it seems a little contrived. And then one more look here at the, um, I guess, yet another style of wall. This, I would say, you might make the case that this is like a barrier or rampart for like war purposes or something to, so that the enemy has to, you know, it slows him down to have to crawl over this or whatever. I don't know that I buy that. I mean, it would certainly make sense to a degree, but the stone has just a subjectively phony look to it, in my opinion, or at least like 5% phony. Some of the, the crisscrossing grooves, like here and these grooves just a little goofy some of these grooves so um yeah just like ha there's an element of precision or or uh, contrived patternation that's just kind of uh mixed in just a bit uh, just enough to make me uh, raise an eyebrow like i say all the time just some of these grooves and the the odd creases and contours. Okay, so again, that's just subjective, but um, what's not subjective is the, uh, or what's less speculative is the f uh, function or dis uh, explanation for this wall. So, I mean, was it really to keep out invaders or is this for like agriculture purposes? I doubt it. I mean, just the orientations of the stones like this, like just sticking up like this and all haphazard. This is, once again, just uh, yet another type of derp salad, in my opinion, which is uh, made to straddle multiple possible explanations. Uh, it, it has a very particular effect on the observer. I'm not quite sure what that is, but... Uh, yeah, it has a, a kind of disheveled, um, wowing effect, and it doesn't really make sense. Like, this is not something anyone in their right mind would build if they were attempting to do something which humans generally do, which would be like farming or building a, a dwelling or even art it doesn't... I, could, I guess art might be even the best explanation for this, but then again, the, the scale of all this, there's just too much of it and the rocks are pretty large as well, so or some of them at least. So uh, the scale is a giveaway of the the bogusness of this portion of wall, and the, 
Ireland in general, in my opinion. So um, one more look at this here. The uh, oops, there's my one scroll foul for the video. Okay, so these pointing up like this, uh, reminiscent of some of the the stone circles, like or the hinges, like um, similar to Stonehenge or whatever, like the, with the uh, big arrays of uh, standing stones that are seen all over Europe and uh, England, Ireland, Scotland. Uh, so reminiscent of that, so a percent similar to that, and then it's also a percent similar, um, or a percentage, a few percent similar to the regular walls we're seeing. So this is just another derpy variation, and it's kind of similar to the previous image with the, just the piles of rocks with some of them standing and this is just like uh, deliberately perplexing and or uh, almost intimidating like there might be an aspect of intimidation to this like what what is your what effect does it have on your sense of self to see these spiky walls you know uh, so there could be that aspect to it Okay, and then I'm basically just saying that this type of wall and this type of wall and all the types we've seen in Ireland so far in this video are basically just different variations on the same type of uh, strategy used in Jordan, probably by the same author. So, yeah, like these stone circles just nonsensically arranged, and they're a little bit more ordered in Ireland, but... Uh, it's the same general principle, just low walls. And this one is Peru, same general idea, just low stone walls arranged haphazardly here as well. Uh, just a quick review. And then here in Bolivia, um, oops, I'm super zoomed in right now. Yeah, here in Bolivia, same deal. The walls here is basically just a slight variation on what we're seeing in Ireland, which is this. Again, this is looking much more man-made, and maybe this is, like, uh, upkept. Like, portions of these previously present walls are uh, given a uh, um, an update, or whatchamacallit, a remodel uh, in modern years by uh, lo the locals or whatever. Um, because these plots look like they may be in use. Although it just kind of looks like grass, maybe they're for sheep or whatever. Uh, but my best guess is that the walls were generally here prior to the conventional modern efforts to build and or restore walls like this. So some of these have a much more modern look to them. Like this is much more looking like modern work, but it, even so it may not be modern work. So just bear that in mind. Yet another look at different variations. So we have these very large slabs down here, and then um, the smaller ones up top, and then kind of uh, frumpier walls here, less impressive. So uh, I think there's some attempt to kind of turn history upside down, like older stuff is larger and more impressive, and then the more recent you get, um, the more uh, dumpy and frumpy stuff gets. And that's a way of like uh, re uh, or inverting our sense of uh, historical trajectory, perhaps. That's just one speculation. So good look at the stone. Looks a little different when it's wet. And I'll just keep moving because I think I've showed most of these images already. Uh, various uh, forts and mm, ring forts and... Yeah, little architectural ruins, mounds and stuff in the area in Ireland. And uh, I'm just going to say that it, these are phony ruins, most likely, and or heavily mor morphed or modified ruins uh, to the point where they're made to look like phony ruins when they're real. That could be, but uh, a better a better guess on my in my estimation is that these are phony ruins from the get go. And some interesting looks here to the uh, the cliffside, and some very interesting morphing or like little indentations, uh, 
derpy, warpy uh, look to the stone. So uh, I think these little hiccups are clues as to the nature of the entire landscape. Uh, so again, these, these things are called forts, but it's really just a ring of stones, like usually a pretty low ring. So, I mean, they don't do much. And they're not, and, and even if it was a fort, like, what are you protecting? There's not much here to protect. <laughs> like, it's just a stone. It's a massive effort to build this for uh, earlier uh, eras of human history without the modern tools and stuff. And what, they're just going to build a, a nonsensical ring for, like, like just an arbitrary place to protect? <laughs> like, what is this, just a place to sleep or something? You know, it's it's like overkill for a, for a dwelling. Um, I mean, just h go hide in a cave or something, you know? Um, or have someone on watch or whatever. This is like a 20-year project or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, and then we see the stone walls, like rectangles like this one right here, just kind of uh, interrupted by this wall in the middle of it, and all these little sub walls and grooves. Uh, the orientation is kind of uh, haphazard and disheveled. Okay, this is somewhere in Ireland. I'm not quite sure where, but uh, it's called a multi valley ring fort, I think, something like that. And it's just like my blah, 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 got like multiple ring mounds around it. And it's pretty large. Like, uh, I don't know if the photo does it justice, but it's a pretty sizable construction. We have lines through it and stuff like this. Uh, this wall, certainly right through the middle of it. Uh, this path here, presumably an entrance, but who knows. And then uh, another little ring mound here and a little, just a little mound there. So in my opinion, this is just a, a derp sandwich or a gibberish salad, uh, a nonsensical, whimsical, non-structure. Uh, so it was never functional. And then just the walls and the, uh, the mound aspect of it. I'm just saying it's yet another version of the same type of contrived uh, gibberish that we've been seeing. In Russia, same idea, basically, just, I don't know if you would call this a stone wall, but it's a raised mound, and it's basically the same thing as this one in Ireland, just kind of a derpy, nonsensical mound, just out in the middle of nowhere. It's like impressive uh, mystery, like intimidating, impressive, magical mystery, which uh, gets us... <laughs> It, uh, it draws our attention in and uh, enchants us uh, and does any number of things from there. But uh, here's what it looks like in the snowy season from above. Just a different look. And uh, this guy, uh, basically the same deal. I just wanted to bring it up because I think it's fairly similar and basically by the same author. Uh, it's the Great Serpent Mound in... Ohio, uh, USA, so basically the same thing as this Russia mound, same thing as this uh, Ireland mound, and even this, basically just variations on the same type of uh, silly, whimsical, nonsensical features. Uh, okay, then back to Ireland, the Iran Islands again, we have this thing called the wormhole, and uh, showed this once before, so I'll just zip through it, and hopefully this is a, an indication to you of artificiality, um, like just the, the very straight edges uh, looking very contrived here, and a couple looks at it there, nice clean groove here, uh, nice straight crease here, and these fairly vertical uh, walls. And there we go. There's a guy for scale. We see this very straight crease here. So uh, we could even include this in the uh, artificially machined, or artificially coast, uh, sculpted coastlines. Let me try that one more time. Artificially sculpted coastlines. We could have included this in that episode. 
uh, just because, yeah, I mean, this is looking very megalithic in my opinion, almost like Baalbek or uh, one of those sites, like the precision of the wall. It's not definitely not looking natural, even though the uh, conventional explanation is that this is just a, a natural feature, which happens to look striking, you know, like a coincidence, but no, I think, I think this is just a clue. Um, just injected, like a very large, blatant clue injected into the landscape in order to get us to uh, question the rest of the landscape, or at least start asking questions. Okay, um, then uh, this is somewhere in Ireland, Northern Ireland, wherever Down Patrick is, and uh, this, I just happened to stumble onto this image recently, and I know I kind of um, backtracked on my usage of the word machined, like the world was machined, but this almost <laughs> looks like a little machined. Um, shoot, there's there's an element of precision here that's looking almost mechanical, in my opinion. You know, like a lathe, uh, or like uh, like when you spin a, a pottery wheel and then you just drag a stick through the uh, the clay. It forms these straight grooves. Um, so this is looking similar to that possibly along the same lines as this wormhole deal, just like they leave it a little bit uh, obvious in some places or uh, less covered up in order to like invite you to investigate or something like that. And this, I don't think this is Ireland or it might be, I, I don't have a location on this, but it was just entitled uh, how a geologist see the, sees this picture. And then all these explanations for like the various features uh, they most likely do make sense. So we've got the shale, we've got basically just conventional uh, geology and theory on uh, these transitions and layers and bends and stuff. So uh, I'm not uh, saying all that stuff does not happen. Uh, I am saying it's possible to mimic any and all of those patterns if you wanted to uh, with sufficiently high knowledge and technology and the right databases or uh, the right uh, case studies to, uh, to mimic. Um, and uh, yeah, th this image compared to this image, very similar. Um, that doesn't mean that one's not artificial and one's not natural. Could be one of each, or it could be both artificial, could be both natural. Um, neither would surprise me at this point. Okay, and then if you remember in the previous video, we took a quick look at Dudo Stone Circle in Northumberland, England. And I want to, um, well, quickly, here's another, here's a closer look at one of those stones kind of looking like a foot, not a foot in my opinion, um, just deceptively made to look like one. Okay, but um, there's another set of sites in the uh, Northumberland, England area that I wanted to get to. This is more along the lines of architectural stuff, um, more so than uh, haphazard walls. So this is uh, Roman ruins in the Northumberland area, and we see these low walls. And uh, the point I want to make is that the walls are not functional. Like here we see a, a fairly uh, flat or um, finished uh, top surface here, and then um, and like a whoops. A step down here and then another step down here so this is an uh, indication to me these the flatness of the top and these uh, deliberate steps that this is the uh, intended form of the uh, structure so if this is the intended form then how is this structure functional it's not is the idea like we have these these step downs of the wall so this is again feature salad in a very particular way that uh, tends to fly under the radar uh, somehow, but in general, these low stone walls, which are passed off as Roman often, uh, these are fake ruins in my opinion. This is not like a formerly tall wall, which got knocked over and then all these stones got carried away to be reused elsewhere or something like that. What I'm saying is this site was likely brought into being as low walls <laughs> for, uh, 
deception or whimsical purposes or something like that. So all around. And I'm only, I've only got really one site in this video, um, but in the future I'll touch on dozens of these sites with the low walls, like the Roman ruins with the deliberately low walls, <laughs> like two foot tall walls, like where'd the rest of the building go, you know? Um, same thing in Saxe Waman, Peru, I think. Uh, or maybe it's, maybe I'm thinking of Ole Olan Tetambo or one of those uh, significant, uh, well-studied sites. But they, they kind of have this similar layout, just low walls that have a bunch of weird features and uh, strange um, damage patterns. And Okay, so a little history. There are about 15 named hill forts in Northumberland, England, but they... But were they really forts? Some, despite their hilltop locations and ramparts, are barely defensible. Were these settlements more symbolically defensive? Did some of them perform ceremonial functions? Were Iron Age people really as warlike as we've often believed? These are just some of the questions modern archaeologists are asking, casting doubt on the accepted wisdom of previous generations. So it's nice to see both independent researchers and some of academia I don't know, I found this on a blog somewhere, but it's nice to see people um, uh, saying what and, you know, questioning these places as uh, or questioning the explanations for these places. Because this doesn't fit the bill of any kind of fort. It's uh, so this person saying despite its location um, and uh, and some of the features, it's barely defensible. So like, are, are, is there more of a symbolic feel to it? Like, look how large these people are compared to these, uh, these dinky little low walls. Like, these are nothings. It's a nothing burger. Again, with a very particular uh, psychological effect. It's like a type of um, gas lighting. Like, they, they, show, they present an obviously phony story, and then plastered over that is a... Uh, a contradictory explanation and then it's like what wins out the uh, the accepted explanation or the um, the observed data like uh, so I think in general the the default tendency of the mind is to default to the uh, the least cognitively um, intensive operation which would be to just accept the uh, accepted theory so despite your uh, own intuitions about what the place may or may not have been used for, uh, we, uh, we jettison that, um, we jettison our own intuition in favor of uh, uh, accepted or socially uh, conventional theory or explanations of the place. So groupthink, basically. So... Um, so that process uh, has a kind of uh, dissociating effect on the, the mind of the observer or studier. Uh, so it, it kind of installs a, a behavioral program of doubting your own uh, reasoning capacity. So if nine people out of ten are saying that this is a fort, and then we, despite our own intuitions, we, uh, we just say, yeah, it's probably a fort. Um, and that all happens uh, subconsciously without us even knowing it. Well, then we're going to develop some dysfunctional patterns, aren't we, where we uh, start to do the same type of uh, dysfunctional um, downgrading of our own intuition. Um, yeah, hopefully that... Uh, introduces that uh, idea well enough. Um, so yeah, just the miscellaneous contours and the feature uh, salad aspect to it. And wrapping up here, some of these are like homesteads or housesteads is what they're branded as, or uh, bathhouses. There's all kinds of designations for these places. These little rooms and just <laughs> rows of stone blocks. Like what is this, a bakery? <laughs> Uh, a bathhouse when you need 30 people showering at once? Not really. So it's like way too much effort uh, for um, to build all this, like the amount of stone and stonework needed. 
and then it, it just all amounts to like a big derpy warped looking um, end product with walls which are too low to have served any purpose and the walls again they're looking fairly well finished on top rather than um, damaged so you can't make the case very well in my opinion that this is uh, that the walls used to be taller uh, yeah see it's like a mm, unless it's like a restoration effort at some point but and again these silly arches um, so I think we're getting to the end of this video even stuff like this this might be a fake bathtub or just a Columbus kind of like that thing we saw in Colorado just like a rock with a divot in it and also right here if you look at that like I kind of doubt this is actual water erosion it certainly may be but um, or there may be subsequent water erosion but many grooves like this exist in the stone and like this lumpy portion of wall up here see like flat ish and then lumpy up here like f this portion is raised up above uh, this flatter portion so flatter here and then lumpier here so does that seem like a legitimate damage pattern it doesn't to me it's like contrived um warpy uh goofness okay so like fake lumpiness or f uh, fake damage patterns and then this is just arrays of squares and some of them have random slabs so it certainly looks like it could have been functional even though uh, it's not um, okay so uh, this is the last image just another look at this one area and I think I made all the points I want to make the uh, note again the uh, haphazard varying height of the walls it's both calculated and uh, somewhat randomized so there's aspects of damage there's aspects of contrived uh, layer changes or height changes there's aspects of mistakes uh, so it's all of these uh, uh, characteristics kind of thrown into a blender and uh, or a, a fader or a mixer and out comes some uh, average of all those characteristics which doesn't uh, really tell a coherent story so um, that is it for this video and a brief note on stone walls and stone circles in general um, I'm not gonna go too too much deeper on that uh, for the time being just because I'm saving it for the a more extended plumbus series like I've uh, again dozens of sites like this and then um, plenty of s more stone circles but I don't really see a point in going too overkill right now I just wanted to uh, drive the main points home and uh, okay in the next video we will take a look at some geoglyphs uh, some large animal like patterns made of stone and make some comments on that kind of stuff okay uh, thank you for watching and I'll catch you later